I am here with Luke. Luke is part of our products team. He is also um, a Holtzman and he is a prototype of sunlight, if you will. He's been around for in the office officially for, um, sorry, 14 years. And, you know, he grew up on sunlight. So he's been around a way longer. We won't say how old you are though, Luke. Thank you. <laughs> and Amber, Amber is part of our products team. Amber's been here for 17 years. She has been a very important part of coming out with new science, or I'm sorry, all our new products. Um, she is, has three children of her own and she has had, her and Luke have had a very, very important role in building this new science program. So first of all, I wanna know, have you gotten your catalog? Have you downloaded your catalog? Have you gotten in the mail? Let me know, leave a comment. I will also leave a link where you can get one of these because everybody needs a catalog, right? I, I already one. got mine. I know, I got mine this weekend. I, was so excited. I got mine in, at Sunlight a long time ago, but at my house this weekend. Um, so I wanted to say that we have a ton of good promotions going on in March. I will drop a link to all of our promotions. Please visit that link, check it out. This is you know, the biggest sale, the program we're talking about today isn't available. Um, it'll be available for pre-order April 1, um, but we still are tweaking a little bit here and there. So let's start talking about it, you guys. Why the new science program? Why? Well, it actually started as a conversation uh, more than a year ago where uh, people came to me and they said, Luke, you know, we did these videos 20 years ago uh, for Discover and Do. And uh, they're kind of low res, you know, 20 years ago, technology was not where it is today. So uh, what can we do about that? And so we started talking about different options. They said, can we up res it? Can we do all this stuff? And as we looked at it, it was like, well, as awesome as Ike and Justin and Brittany are in these science videos, and as much as they are loved and I love them and I was part of making them back then, it, we just can't use them the way that we want to. So that made us go back and say, okay, well, what content should we do, right? So then we started looking at our books and we said, okay, wow, we can even update the books that we wanna do with this. How can we make this better? Which then opened up our, an opportunity to even rethink all of science. So what in the world do we wanna do with all of science if we could start over from, from scratch? And so that's that's where this started was low resolution videos that you know are this big on your phone now. And uh, what, can, what can we do with it from there? Amber, do you have anything to add? Well, let me <clears throat> look at what is a good way to teach science these days? What do kids need to know? I mean, our world has changed in the last 20 years with, I mean, technology just going from only a website in your computer to you can have a website in your on your phone in your pocket to wear it on your wrist. Technology is completely different, not just for videos, but in our personal lives and our experience. And so we know now we can't just teach kids this is what we have today. This is the technology you need to know because by the time they're adults, it's gonna be completely different. So what we really need to tell kids is this is how you learn. This is how you can figure out things for yourself. This is the way science in the physical world works. What can you do with it? What can you come up with? How can you innovate it? And so we've completely shifted how we're teaching our kids so that they are learning for themselves and will be able to apply with their own skills to science in the future. Very good. So is there anything else we missed about the new and improved approach to science? Well, we've always loved the hands-on side of things um, because that lets kids see science in action. So we didn't want to lose any of that. We wanted to keep that going. But we also didn't just want to demo stuff because a lot of our original discover and do things were, here's this thing, cool. And we didn't want kids to just think, cool, and then move on with their life like it didn't apply to them, right? So we wanted to help them understand that there are actual problems that we can solve. And these aren't uh-oh problems like, oh no, but, but rather problems with solutions where we can actually make the world a better place. So we want to introduce them to how does creation work? What is this, what's all this about? And then how do we use our God-given talents to go and make the world a better place? And so we didn't just want demonstration, we actually want kids to get active and get into this kind of stuff and start thinking like scientists in a solution-oriented mindset. We're definitely highlighting the do part of Discover and Do. Good point, yes. <laughs> so you did mention this. I just want to make sure, is there any other things we should cover on how it teaches kids to think like scientists? Yeah, so when we're doing our science hands-on portion of it, which are going to be all based off of experiments, 
um, we're going to use the scientific method through this through this whole process. So we're going to start with kind of a, an observation, or in this case, a specific question. So, um, you know, why do brain forests grow the way that they do? Or how do boats float? And these kinds of questions with kids could totally just get, they'd say, okay, yeah, that's a real question. Like, what is this, right? And so we're going to then jump right into, from observation into make a prediction. And then from there, they're going to build out um, how we're going to carry out an, an investigation related to this, which is, you know, carry out the experiment, do the experiment, and, and kind of see where we are, which then leads us to draw conclusions as we get results. So what's that all about? But then we don't just stop with just one activity and kind of one, one experiment. We then push forward into how else does this connect to other ideas? Because we always want to be inspiring kids to go further beyond just the thing that they're looking at right now and to start thinking, oh, wow, this world is way bigger. There's so much more and there's so many more opportunities for us to be involved in things. Yeah. So if you want kind of a picture of what your week will look like as you're teaching, um, the first three days you're going to read out of our great books that we've picked. We've got all new books, mostly new. Some of our favorites we've kept, but for kindergarten, these are all new. Um, and then the fourth day you will do an experiment where you work through this process. And the experiment ties back to what you read. So when you're reading about ants, you're going to do an experiment about several experiments about ants and how they live. And then your fifth day, you get to read just a really fun title. Or th this one's all about why questions that little kids ask all the time. So you don't have to just say, I don't know, we have to look it up on Google. No, you have a book that teaches you specifically and you have pictures. It's just so great. Yeah. And speaking of these topics and kind of things that we're doing, we're kind of reevaluating all of this stuff so that we are making certain that not just with kindergarten, we're going to just kind of keep keep layering this on because we want to make certain that kids are constantly getting a deeper understanding of each question and idea as we go. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Great job, you guys. So what about the books? How um, okay. the books? history, I think, is what specifically I want to know. Yes, okay. we have been digging through all the science books we can find, and we found some really great new series. Um, this is a DK title that we've just discovered that there's several of these that we love. Um, same kind of format, um, great colors, fun little text. Um, for the first part of, of kindergarten, you dig through um, science kids can really see and feel, so biology. And they'll study um, the rainforests. Um, then they'll dig into, uh, we've picked, topics kids thought we thought kids could really relate to. So we did bees and wasps and ants and things you can see in your backyard usually. So you can even go out inside and look at these, these insects that you're looking at. Um, and then later in the year, we'll do some weather stuff and we get to do magic school bus with some weather, which is one of my favorites. Um, and you'll do weather observations and weather recordings and just all kinds of fun things that kids get to learn um, that are just really applicable for this age group. And then there's a biography. Does yeah. have that? There yeah. It is. So I, my, my favorite thing about this biography is that it's not just um, a scientist, uh, but it's actually someone who is making the world a better place. And so um, this is a person in Africa who has actually transformed the climate in Africa. And it can be so hard to kind of get through through all the po politics often of like the debate that's out there in the general world, when we can just go back to the basics of the science and say, wow, we can make a difference ourselves. And so what I love about this book is that it takes us from uh, activism to action and just enables people to see, oh, wow, I can make a difference in the world today just by taking very specific, simple steps. And then that takes us further into, wow, what else can we do with science that enables to, us to do this? So I love the fact that we have these uh, biographies in these programs and it's just, it's so great. We're keeping that just the way that we've had in the past and enabling kids to see that regular people can go out and do crazy, amazing things to make the world a better place. Yeah, this book is so gorgeous. It's just gorgeously illustrated. It's great. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about some of the new content. So um, the other thing that's really coming into play with these new with this new program is, is STEM and engineering design, because um, we're not just looking at ecosystems and that kind of stuff. We actually want kids to see that there are problems that they can solve and that they can do stuff with. So STEM is a huge portion of this program where kids are going to be doing activities and then improving on that. So Amber, can you can you explain that a little bit better? Because I'm not doing a good job of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so STEM is all about learning about a topic and then deciding, okay, 
if there's a problem with this topic, how can I solve it? Like if I need to get a ball to go in a different direction, what are some different ways I can do that? Um, if I need to move something across the water, how can I do that? And so the kids get to learn about ways to do that, but then also design their own way of making that happen. Um, yeah, because so that's cool. yeah, because that's that's the do part again of this discover and do. Yeah. And again, we're not just dictating what the kids are going to do. We're actually helping them kind of branch out and step into experimenting on their own and improving on things. Because again, we want them to be able to, when they've become adults, go into these hard sciences and change the world for the better because they know how creation works and what God is calling them to do in making the world a better place for all of us to live. Yeah, we're definitely bringing more of a highlight on innovation or in challenging kids to innovate for themselves. Yeah. And then you did mention this is typical, we have a four day and a five day program. The book held up previous, did you both hold it up or? We yeah. all hold it up. I'll hold it up now, yeah. yeah. The, the big book of why, so, yeah. Yeah, we have, um, I didn't mention earlier, but there are activity sheets to go with your program. Mm -hmm. um, we are planning activity sheets for the first four days um, and then the, the fifth day, we really just want to be an enjoyable day to just read and, and just soak up some science in a fun way. Yeah. And then the instructor's guide, we kind of take always with our notes so that as the books talk about stuff, we're going to kind of push it even a little bit further so that your instructor's guide has a lot of useful, juicy content in it. Uh, even sometimes where the book is like, okay, it's, it says this, but actually there's even more here. And that's one of my passions is helping kids see that there's always more. I don't want them to say, okay, I've got it. I know everything there is. No, there's so much more to get. And so I'm really excited about how this whole program from the experiments and the videos down to just the notes in the IG and everything in between with the books is all about pushing forward into learning more and being even more in excited and curious about the world that's out there. I, I, I pulled up the title because it's a very long title, but it's very it, it explains what's in there so well. So it's Science K, Ecosystem Meteorology. Me, Meteorology. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I was gonna mess it up. Physics and Engineering Design. And it really does cover all of those things, which is spectacular thing for you know those little minds, which is Yeah, and, and again, we're doing this at an age appropriate you know, <laughs> kindergarten level, right? Like, like you, you think engineering design, oh my goodness. Well, no, because kids can Thank get into this. We just have to do it at a level that they can, that they can handle it. And so that's, I, I'm so excited uh, to see what kids are jumping into with this. Absolutely. So there's been a little bit of talk here and there about updating more science. Could you guys let us in on that? We, we plan to go further into other levels with this um, all the way through eighth grade. They're coming, but um, we'll, we'll release them as we get them done. Yeah, uh, there's already, we've already done a ton of work on that. Amber has been just plowing through books and going through stuff. Um, we've been looking at things and topics and what do we want to cover? And again, going back through and saying, okay, if we cover it at this age, how do we cover it again here at a deeper level? So that's all stuff that we're working through as, uh, as we're working on this whole thing. Very good. Well, well done, guys. I know a lot of people are excited about the new Science K. I'm excited. Um, again, it will be on pre-order April 1, a available a little bit later as we finalize some of the final experiments in the program. Um, but you, I will drop a link down below where you can learn more about this program. We will have um, the link to uh, that explains everything that's in it, as well as a blog post that Luke is writing. Are you writing the blog post? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Someone <laughs> wrote a blog post. We'll put it in the link below. Yep. Anyway, yep. thank you so much for joining us, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks for Bye. thanks for joining me, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. This was fun.